Thank you. The state calls Vince Kaya Kamanu. Um, we swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and the truth to help you God. Thank you. All right, Officer Kaya Kamanu, as you're answering questions, please make verbal responses for the record. Mr. Wood, you can inquire. Thank you. Can you state your name and spell your last name for the record? Vincent Keone Kaya Kamanu. Last is K A A I A. -K -A. Officer, I'm sorry. Could you talk a little more loudly right into your mic? I think we're barely picking that up. Is that better? that loud enough? Is it quiet? If you'll give us just a sec, we'll make sure that microphone's adequate. You want me to start spelling the last name, see if that picks up? I think the longer one will work better. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to make a lot of noise. Can you shut it off for a second? Can you say something into that? Just to yes. Yes. I think that's definitely better. Thanks for that. Uh, Mr. Wood, go ahead and just uh, restart if you would, please. Thank you. Okay. Can you state your name and spell your last name for the record? Vincent Keone Kaikamanu. Last is K-A-A-I-A-K-A-M-A-N-U. Thank you. What is your occupation? I am currently the Chief Deputy of Madison County Sheriff's Office. How long have you been in that position? I started with Madison January of this year. So 2024? Correct. What was your occupation before you took on that position? I worked with Fremont County Sheriff's Office. How long were you with Fremont County Sheriff's Office? Uh, approximately 18 years. Have you ever worked for any other law enforcement office? I have not. Are you post certified? Yes. With with the title uh, chief deputy, uh, is there a specific title we should refer to you as? Uh, th that's fine. Yeah. Have you been involved uh, in the investigation regarding Chad Daybell, Tammy Daybell, Tylee Ryan, and JJ Ballow? I have. In your current occupation as Chief Deputy of the Madison County Sheriff's Department, uh, is, is it part of your responsibilities to oversee the jail? Yes. So they report to you? The captain does, yes. As part of your responsibilities in overseeing the jail, uh, do you have an understanding of the jail intel mate or the phone call system? Yes, I do. What is that system and how does it work? The Telmate system is a phone system that the inmates while in jail can make phone calls or uh, FaceTime visits with their family, friends outside of the jail. And how long have you overseen this at the Madison County Jail? Uh, since I've been there January 2024. Right. Have you had experience with Telmate in other counties? I have. Uh, did Fremont County use the Telmate system? Yes. And the Telmate system, does that include uh, telephone and video visits? Yes, it does. On video calls, is the camera always utilized? 
On video calls, the camera is utilized when the iPad is docked to the station. Uh, once that, that iPad's removed from the docking station, uh, the video camera shuts off and it goes into a phone call mode. How do you ensure that inmates don't make calls on behalf of other inmates? When someone's uh, brought into the jail and booked in, they're given a specific um, PIN number that's to them. Um, when they go to set that up through Tailmate, they have to give their PIN number that they were given. Um, they also take a face photo and they say their name approximately three times so it's voice recorded. Whenever an inmate places a call or, or participates in the Telmate system, is any information recorded or stored regarding that call? Yes. What is recorded? Um, the whole conversation, uh, whether it's a FaceTime or a phone call, is all recorded from once it starts to when it ends. And is the outside party required to provide name and personal information? They can go on to what's called gettingoutofjail.com and uh, put that information in. That allows them to put money on their books for phone calls or commissary. How do you access the information that is stored on the Telmate system? I've got a username and password. Is there any way for you to edit the information that is stored on Telmate? No. Can you, are you aware of any other agency being able to edit it? No. Where are the phones and tablets located in the jail? In our jail system, we have what are called pods, and the pads and phones are located in the day room where all the inmates have access to that. Um, the phone is connected to the wall, so if they're just doing a voice call, they need to stay out there. Um, like I testified earlier, they have that pad there and they need to stay there to do a face to face or FaceTime. But once that pad's removed, it blacks out and they can take that into their cell and talk, but it's only a voice talk. How do you know the date and time of each call? Uh, the calls are time stamped. Now we've been talking about Madison County, correct? Correct. correct. Um, I want to call your attention to June 9th of 2020. At that time, was Lori Vallow Daybell an inmate at the Madison County Jail? Yes. And to your knowledge, Chad Daybell was not in jail at that time? Correct. All right. Your Honor, I'd ask that the witness be handed States Exhibit 33. Very well. Detective, do you recognize States Exhibit 33? Yes. What is it? This is a thumb drive with a call on it. All right. Uh, do you know what day that call was made? Uh, the call on this thumb drive was made June 9th, 2020. All right. And who are the parties to that call? Lori Vallow Daybell and Chad Daybell. Right. And have you reviewed the call on that thumb drive? Yes. Uh, are your initials on that thumb drive? Yes. Did you put your initials on that thumb drive after reviewing that call? Yes. Is that call a true and accurate representation of what is stored on the Telmate system? Yes. Your Honor, I'd ask that States Exhibit 33 be uh, entered into evidence. Any objection? All right. And just one more clarifying point. Is that the only file contained on that thumb drive, Mr. Wood? Yes, it is. Thank you. Exhibit 33 is admitted. Uh, just real quick, Detective. When was the first time you heard this phone call? June 9th, 2020. Where were you when you heard it? I was at the property of 202 North, 1900 East. Um, 
Chad Daybell's residence. Uh, were you there for the search of Chad Daybell's residence on June 9th? Yes. And so you accessed this phone call from that location? Correct. Your Honor, may I publish to the jury? You may. This is a call from and paid for by Lori, an inmate at Madison County Jail. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. If you don't wish to talk, hang up now. Thank you for using Telmate. Hi, babe. Hello. Are you okay? No, oh, they're searching. Property. The house right now? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to MS. Mark means we'll be talking to you. Okay. Well, are they in the house? No, they're out in the property. Are they seizing stuff again? They're searching. Mm -hmm. There's the search warrant, and so the moment I just stood on those with the jibs. Okay. Yeah, I tried to set up a a call. Glad you called. Yeah. And we'll see what transpires. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't. What do you want really... me to do? Pray. What? What do you want me yeah, to do? Yeah, pray. <laughs> pray. Um, yeah. Okay. What can I do for you? Um, I'm feeling pretty calm. Mm -hmm. I would call Mark or Katie. Can you just talk with him? Have you talked to him already? I did call him, yes. So he knows what they're doing? Yeah. It's a good call from somebody else I need to talk to. I love you so much. Okay, I love you. Should I try to call you later? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, he can try, yeah. I'll answer if I can. Okay. I love you, and we'll talk soon. Okay, baby. We love you. Okay. Love you. Good night. Detective, do you know approximately what time of day that phone call was made? Uh, it was around 11, 11 o'clock in the afternoon. Your Honor, the state will be recalling Detective Kai Kamani for uh, other things, but at this time we have no further questions. All right, Mr. Pryor, would you prefer to cross-examination or cross-examine at this time or save that for when he's recalled? Very well.
And officer, you've also, we're coming back, you've got a subpoena from my office as well to, to show up and we've made arrangements for that. Is that correct? Correct. Thank you. Uh, officer, uh, prosecutor Wood asked you where you were on June 9th of 2020. Correct. And you were at the Daybell residence. Is that right? Yes. Uh, any idea how many other officers were there at that time? Um, I can't recall how many other officers in the agencies were there. Was it more than 10? Yes. More than 15? Yes. Okay. So more than 30? Yes. Okay. So 30 police officers from various agencies, obviously. Right. 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 And at that point, I heard on the tape where Mr. Daybell mentioned that he was at Emma's. Now, um, you know, do you know who he's talking about when he says Emma? Um, his daughter. Okay. And in relation to the house, uh, where does Emma live? At the time of this incident, Emma lived kitty corner, uh, roughly from Mr. Daybell's home. That would be what the South East corner, the Southwest, Southwest, excuse me, yes. my Southwest corner of the, the property Correct. was kitty corner. Yeah. Relatively close to the, uh, the Daybell, Chad Daybell's house, right? Yes. Within walking distance. Yes. So he was over there and there were no restrictions on his movement. Is that right? Correct. And he could come and go as he pleases. At that time, yes. Right. And at that point, um, you overheard him talk about a Mark Means. On the phone call, yes. Right. Okay. And on the phone call, he said he was going to talk to somebody else. Correct. Okay. Did you ever learn who he was trying to talk to, that other person? I did not. Okay. Uh, did you have an occasion to be present when um, Officer Wheeler and Officer Hope were recording the interaction with Mr. Daybell? I was not. Okay. Okay. And at that point, if Mr. Daybell were to be leaving at that time that this phone call took place, he would have the right to do that. And there was no restriction stopping him. Correct. And he could go if he wanted to meet somebody or meet up with somebody, he'd have that opportunity. Correct. Now, would you agree with me with 30 plus officers showing up at your house, that that would cause you a concern? The average citizen. To the average citizen. Yes. In fact, you probably agree with me that you were a street, were you a street officer at some point with Fremont County? Yes. Parole officer? Yes. And when a pol police officer puts on his lights and gets behind you and pulls you over, that's, that's an emotional or at least a, a, an unnerving experience as well, right? Yes. So you would suggest that when 30 police officers, 30 plus police officers show up at your house and search that that would cause you to have some concern, right? I'd be nervous. Yes. More than nervous, right? I'd be nervous. All right. Now, Lori Vallow made mention that um, search again, and you're nodding your head. Had you been out there previously to search the Daybell property? I have not been out there previously. Are you aware as the, uh, um, as the manager, and I don't want to use the incorrect term, you are the supervisor of this case. Would that be fair? Or is there a better term? Over the Fremont County portion of it, yes. Okay. Are you aware as part of your investigation as to whether or not anybody else had been out in any of the law enforcement agencies on Mr. Daybell's property previous to that time? Yes, I was aware. All right. How many times are you aware that they've been out on his property prior to that time? Uh, prior to that time, I believe they're out in January of 2020 doing a search of the house. Okay. Any other times? Not that I can recall right now. Did anybody from your agency ever go out to the Daybell property unannounced and search the property without uh, a large uh, uh, group of officers? Unannounced? No. All right. How about announced and saying we're going to go out and just look around? With a search warrant, yes. Okay. And was that in the January one occasion? Correct. There was no other occasion that officers went out there. Is that what you're telling me? I can't recall what other dates we were out there. Okay. But yes. But there were other dates that you were out there uh, looking at the property. Is that fair? Correct. Okay. A number of them? No. More than five? No. Okay.
Now, as part of your um, investigation of this case, you've interviewed um, a number of witnesses in this case. Would that be fair? Correct. You've interviewed Melanie Gibb? Correct. Several times. One time. Okay. Regan Price? Yes. How many times? One time. Zaluma Pastenas? Um, approximately three or four times. I'd have to okay. check my notes. And then um, Garth Daybell, Chad's son, you've interviewed him a couple of times. One time. Okay. And where was that interview? That was done at Rexburg PD. Okay. And in that occasion, um, uh, you showed up in Mr. Daybell's, Garth Daybell's house. Is that right? Or did you show up at the school? I, we went to the school. Yes. Okay. And at the school, it's where Garth was working. Is that right? Correct. I wouldn't consider that an interview. Okay. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. But, um, uh, at some point you approached Mr. Daybell and who were with, who was with you at that point? Uh, special agent Ricky, Wright. Okay. Anybody else? No. And at that point, um, you, uh, took uh, Garth and asked that he go down to the police station with you. Is that right? No, not at that time. Okay. But you mentioned that you approached Garth Daybell at the school. Correct. And that the interview, or at least what you said may not have been an interview took place at the police station. So there was two different times. Oh, okay. One time we talked with Garth at the school to advise him of the findings of his mother's death. Okay. That I would not consider an interview. Okay. The second interview was done at Rexburg or the first interview that we brought him in to Rexburg PD. Okay. And when you say brought him in, where did you, uh, where did you first have contact with him on the day you brought him in to the Rexburg police department? That we made contact with him at his home. And at that point you, uh, uh, did he have a choice at that point or were you taking him into, uh, 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 custodial care at that point? At that time it was custodial care to come in and talk with us. Okay. So he wasn't, uh, he didn't have an option. He was going to go to the Rexburg police department. Is that right? Correct. Okay. And then how long was he at the Rexburg police department on that particular day? I'd have to look, um, I want to say a couple hours. And at that point, did you ever talk to him? Small talk until his attorney got there. Okay. Got him some McDonald's, some pop. Okay. But at that point, there was nothing in terms of the, the, uh, the um, interview with Garth on that particular day. Is that right? Not until his attorney got there. Okay. Okay. And do you have a recollection of how long it took for an attorney for him to get there? I don't, off the top of my head, I'd have to look in my uh, notes on that. Now, um, we're going to be revisiting that in a little while in terms of the audio or the videotapes of, uh, of Chad on, the, on 9th, June 9th. Did you have an opportunity to review the audio and the videotapes of, of Chad and Emma on June 9th? I have not. Okay, so you don't have any information about those? I do not. part of your uh, investigation in this case? I do not. Okay. Okay. Other than law enforcement on June 9th of 2020 and June 10th of 2020, other than law enforcement, was there anybody on the scene at the, the residence on either of those days who was not a law enforcement officer? Um, we had the Fremont County coroner there. Okay. Um, and a few cadaver dogs. Okay. I believe that's it. Okay. Nobody else. Not that I can recall at that time. No. And were you there the entire time or were you there just for a short period of time? The entire time. The entire time would have been from like seven o'clock in the morning until when on the ninth? We finished up about four or five on the ninth. Okay. And the last part I want to cover, and we're going to revisit some stuff. I mean, it just, we'll do this in pieces, obviously. Um, when you were in there in January, January of what year again? I'm sorry. 2020. Okay. When you were there in January of 2020, you also brought cadaver dogs, right? Are you referring to the warrant that was done January 2020? Yes, that's what I'm referring to. I was not at that search warrant, so. Okay. 
And I don't know why I thought you were. Do you have any knowledge as to whether or not they brought cadaver dogs that day? I can't recall if they did or didn't. Okay. Judge, that's all I have. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Mr. Pryor. Mr. Wood, any redirect? Just briefly, Your Honor. The defense spoke to you about nervousness. Correct. Correct. That's a, a normal reaction when when you're pulled over by the police. Correct. Have you listened to multiple jail phone calls between Mr. Daybell and and Lori when she was in custody? Yes. Was the tone of this phone call normal? There's a I would require some additional foundation for that, Mr. Wood. Okay. So I'll overrule the objection at this point. Has it, was, has it been a regular part of your investigation to listen to jail phone calls between Chad and Lori? Yes. And you've listened to many of them? Yes. Right. And in listening to those, would you say that the phone call on June 9th, that the tone of that phone call is different than their average phone call? It's uh, overruled with additional foundation. I will permit any recross just on this issue as well, though, Mr. Pryor. Go ahead, Mr. Wood. Was it a different tone? Yes. Were you present on Mr. Daybell's property when Mr. Daybell drove away? Yes. And do you know what a pro what was taking place around the time on Mr. Daybell's property when he drove away? Could you repeat that into your microphone, please? I'm an object judge on the basis of foundation. Uh, well, he indicated he was on location when this happened, so that's overruled. That, sorry. Are you aware of what was happening on Mr. Daybell's property when he drove away for, uh, from the area? Yes. What was happening? We were looking for two bodies on his bot on his property. All right. And are you aware if when he drove away, if one of those bodies was being discovered? Yes. Who? J.J. Val. All right. Your Honor, I have no further questions. All right. If you'd like, Mr. Pryor, I'll allow recross. But limited in scope to those two issues. All right. Thank you, Judge. So you talked a little bit about the, 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 the tone of the... Um, phone call was different. Is that right? Yes. And we talked a little bit earlier about the fact that there were over 30 police officers on a, a piece of property that day, correct? Yes. So you would expect that there would be a little different of a tone when 30 police officers at seven o'clock in the morning arrive at your home. And would, would, would that be fair? That would be fair. Okay. And then as far as what was going on when Mr. Daybell left, are you aware that Mr. Daybell was going to see an attorney that morning uh, as he was leaving Emma Murray's house? Objection calls for speculation. I asked him if he's aware of it. It's overruled. Are you aware of that or not? I was not. Okay. And again, you didn't have an opportunity to review the tape from the videotape of Officer Wheeler or Officer Hope on that morning. Is that right? Correct. So you don't know the circumstances or the reason why Mr. Daybell left his daughter's home kitty corner from the house and drove off, do you? I am not aware why he drove off. So to suggest that the fact that they found a body on his property and that was the reason for him driving off, you don't know what the reason Mr. Daybell drove off. It, there's another reason or it could be another reason. Would that be fair? There could be another reason, yes. Right. All right. That's all I have, Judge. Thank you. All right. Thank you.